Did you know that all of history is actually just about a thousand years old and that everything we've ever learned in history books is all a great lie? I didn't know that either, but we're going to explore that cockamamie theory together. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. I have my Patreon supporter Thomas Farrell to thank for telling me about the new chronology. I had no idea what this was, and Thomas asked me to give a fair and balanced critique of this idea. Instead, I decided to read through the Wikipedia article with you and make fun of all of this with as much sarcasm as I feel like. And if you want a fair and balanced understanding of these myths of ancient history, then you need to subscribe to the channel World of Antiquity. At World of Antiquity, Dr. David Miano gives outstanding explanations for why certain pseudo-historical ideas that have been brought up in the past decades and even centuries don't necessarily make sense with actual archaeological facts. So let's look through the Wikipedia article together of the New Chronology. The New Chronology by Fomenka is a pseudo-historical conspiracy theory proposed by Anatoly Fomenka, who argues that, that events of antiquity generally attributed to the civilizations of the Roman Empire, ancient Greece, and ancient Egypt actually occurred during the Middle Ages, more than a thousand years later. Okay. The theory further proposes that world history prior to AD 1600 has been widely falsified to suit the interests of a number of different conspirators, including the Vatican, the Holy Roman Empire, and the Russian House of Romanov, all working to obscure the true history of the world centered around a global empire called the Russian yeah. Horde. So something that we'll talk about here is that apparently a lot of this is wrapped up in, um, uh, what's that called? Um, Soviet Russian nationalism of the 20th century, <laughs> evidently. And, uh, and a lot of this is pretty, pretty nuts, but it is entertaining. The new chronology is most commonly associated with the Russian mathematician Anatoly Fomenka, born in 1945, although published works on the subject are actually a collaboration between Fomenka and several other mathematicians. Now, I'm not one to go criticizing non-professional experts. Oh, you don't have a degree in that subject. Why should you be talking about that? Because I am a geologist helicopter pilot and I talk about Latin and history and other things on this channel. Nevertheless, we're not off to a good start here, are we? The new chronology also contains a reconstruction, an alternative, an alternate, an alternative chronology radically shorter than the standard historical timeline because all ancient history is folded into the Middle Ages. Oh, it's going to be so great. Just wait. According to Fomenko's claims, the written history of humankind only goes back as far as AD 800. And there's almost no information about events between 800 and 1000 and almost no historical events took place almost and most, excuse me, and most known historical events took place in AD 1000 to 15. Hundred, very interesting. The new chronology is rejected by mainstream historians and is consistent. It is inconsistent with absolute and relative dating techniques in the wider scholarly community. That is, of course, <laughs> when you have you know radiocarbon dating and geology and all these other wonderful things put together, and you know written testimony that's continuous for thousands of years. It's kind of silly. In fact, it's extremely silly. But let's see. How silly. Academic interest in the theory stems mainly from its popularity, which has compelled historians and other scientists to argue against its methods and proposed world history. A second point of interest from the mainstream academic community is to, un un is to understand why it has become so popular and to perhaps have sympathy for another, oh gosh, another, a second point of interest for the mainstream academic community is to understand why it has become so popular as to perhaps have the sympathy of 30% of Russians. Oh my goodness. Um, it is, wait, do we have, look at that, what is this? Oh my gosh, 30% of Russians. It is not really known to which extent readers of new chronology texts regard it as history or fiction, nor are there reliable statistics on who the readers are. Fair enough. The theory emerged alongside other alternate histories and conspiracy literature in the period of increased freedom of speech that followed the breakup of the Soviet Union. 
I think double-edged sword is the uh, term here. History of the new chronology. The idea of chronologies that differ from the conventional chronology can be traced back to at least early 17th century. Jean Hardouin then suggested that many ancient historical documents were much younger than commonly believed to be. Okay, that's interesting. And... 1685, he published a version of Pliny the Elder's Natural History, in which he claimed that most Greek and Roman texts had been forged by Benedictine monks. Sure. Um, when later questioned on these results, um, Hardouin stated that, excuse me, Hardouin, Ardouin, the H isn't pronounced, I don't know why I'm pronouncing it. Ardouin stated that he would reveal the monk's reasons in a letter to be revealed only after his death. We're unable to find such a document among his posthumous papers. Well, even if you only, only matters to you to be believed in life, I have it, I swear, just believe me. And then you die and there's nothing there. It's pretty funny. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton, examining the current chronology of ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, and the ancient Near East, expressed discon discontent with prevailing theories. And in the chronology of ancient kingdoms amended, proposed one of his own, which, basing its study on Apollonius of Rhodes's Argonautica, changed the traditional dating of the Argonautic expedition, the Trojan War, and the founding of Rome. Now, these are all legendary or mythological events. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Edwin Johnson expressed the opinion that early Christian history was largely invented and corrupted in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. Okay. So something that we're getting here is the notion of uncertainty. I deal with this and I address it in this video about the dead language which speaks. Just because we don't have audio recordings of ancient Latin or ancient Greek doesn't mean we can't know with a great deal of precision how the languages were pronounced in those times. Even though it's not 100% certain, it doesn't mean that we can't make a good reconstruction. It's something like, well, archaeology and history. We know about Cicero and Caesar and when they lived and what they did and what they built and all sorts of things. Thanks to, of course, archaeology and history and science and other sorts of disciplines that all get put together, right? Normally, when we talk about, well, obviously, we don't think that Cicero and Caesar made up. Um, we usually are able to say, well, that's why we know about the sounds of ancient languages. But this is the kind of thing that, oh, well, we can't be certain about ancient history, so it must all be a bunch of nonsense. Or mathematicians from Russia can, of course, rewrite history any way they Choose, and let's see exactly how. Fomenka published several articles on new mathematical methods of history in peer-reviewed journals. Citation needed, evidently. Um, they stirred a lot of controversy, but ultimately Fomenka failed to win any respected historians to his side. I wonder why. By early 1990s, Fomenka shifted his focus from trying to convince the scientific community via peer-reviewed publications to publishing books. Mm-hmm. Alex Beam writes that Fomenka and his colleagues were discovered by the Soviet scientific press in the early 1980s, leading to a brief period of renown. A contemporary review from the Soviet journal Questions of History complained, constructions have nothing in common with Marxist historical science. So apparently this pseudo, sorry, this reimagined history um, isn't good enough for the Marxist socialist way of life or um, historical Science. Historical science. Nuclear vessels. For what it's worth, I love Russian culture, language, history. So <laughs> I hope I don't sound too derisive towards our Russian friends or Russian speaking friends in the audience. I have a great ad admiration and respect for so many cultures and languages and, uh, and history in general. So I hope I don't come off as uh, being. I don't know what, je ne sais quoi, Fomenka's claims. Central to Fomenka's new chronology is his claim of the existence of a Slav Turk empire called the Russian Horde, which played a dominant role in Eurasian history before the 17th century. The various peoples identified in ancient and medieval history from the Scythians, Huns, Goths, Bulgars, uh, oh gosh, Ukrainians, Cossacks, Belarusians, Nothing but elements of the Russian horde. Yeah. Fomenka claims that most probable prototype, <laughs> the most probable prototype of the historical Jesus was Andronikos the first Com Comnenos, <laughs> allegedly, 
uh, <laughs> in the 12th century, the emperor of Byzantium, known for his failed reforms, his traits and deeds reflected in biographies of many real and imaginary persons. I love the scare quotes. The historical Jesus is a composite figure and reflection of the Old Testament prophet uh, Elisha, okay, 850-100 BC, Pope Gregory VII uh, in the 11th century, and Saint Basil of Caesarea in the 4th century, and even Yin Yanhuo. <laughs> just, let's just, yeah, I'm sure that's, that's rigging the Chinese. I'm sure they'll be delighted about that. Um, who reigned in the uh, 11th century. Um, Eucl Euclides, Bacchus, and Dionysus, because Bacchus and Dionysus are different apparently now. Fomenka explains these seemingly vast differences in the biographies of these figures as resulting from differences, difference in languages, points of view, and time frame of the authors of said accounts and biographies. He claims that the historical Jesus was born in Cape Fiolent in Crimea, on December 25th, 1152 AD, and was crucified on March 20th of 1185 AD on Joshua's Hill overlooking the Bosphorus. <laughs> Fomenka also emerges the cities and histories of Jerusalem, Rome, and Troy into New Rome. There's a New Rome. Hey, there's a New Mexico. Gospel Jerusalem in the 12th and 13th centuries so wait, so okay, sorry. New Rome equals Gospel Jerusalem equals Troy equals Yoros Castle. Oh my god. <laughs> to the south of Yoros Castle is Joshua's Hill, which Fomenka alleges is the hill Calvary depicted in the Bible. Fomenka claims that the Hagia Sophia is actually the biblical temple of Solomon. He identifies Solomon with, as Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, who ruled in the uh, 15th and 16th centuries. However, according to Fomenka, the word Rome is a placeholder and can signify any one of several different cities and kingdoms. Um, he, I wonder if the actual Rome <laughs> where I currently am is one of them. Um, he claims the first Rome, or ancient Rome, or Misraim, is an ancient Egyptian kingdom, nope, uh, in the delta of the Nile. Uh, oh, look, there's the pretty Nile with its capital in Alexandria. <laughs> and the second and most famous new Rome is Constantinople. And that the third Rome is constituted by three different cities, Constantinople, Rome and Italy, oh good, the actual Rome, and Moskva. <laughs> also, according to his claims, Rome in Italy was founded around 1380 by Aeneas. And Moscow, as the third Rome, was the capital of the Great Russian Horde. <laughs> this is tremendous. Specific claims. Yes, let's get specific. Let's get, you know. Oh, I love this. Maybe... This article contains embedded lists that may be poorly defined, unverified, or indiscriminate. Please help to clean it up. Wikipedia, May 2015. And here we are. Some of the central concepts of new chronology asserted by Fomenka and colleagues are, up to the 17th century, historians and translators often assigned... Are those quotes scary enough for you? different dates and locations to different accounts of the same historical events, creating multiple phantom copies of these events. These phantom copies were often misstated by centuries or even millennia and ended up incorporated into conventional chronology. This chronology was largely manufactured by Joseph uh, Justus um, Scaliger in the Opus Novum de Emendatione Temporum in the 16th century, Thesaurum, Temporum, the 17th century, and represents a vast array of dates produced without any justification whatsoever, containing and repeating sequences of dates with shifts equal to multiples of the major Kabbalistic numbers. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, this is by Fomenka Anatoly. One might wonder 
One might wonder why we should want to revise the chronology of ancient history today and base our revision on new empirical statistical methods. It would be worthwhile to remind the reader that in the 16th and 17th century, chronology was considered to be subdivision of mathematics. Okay. <laughs> was it now? I guess because you have to count, right? <laughs> Is that the reason? <laughs> 37 complete Egyptian horoscopes uh, found in, in Dendera, Esna, and other temples have unique valid astronomical solutions with dates ranging from AD 1000 and up to as late as AD 17. The vocabulary of Egyptian astronomical symbols once applied to horoscopes from temples allows for extraction of unique dates of eclipses. Astronomical data that are contained is sufficient for unique dating. There are symbols allowing for astronomical interpretation of the symbols. Do not change from one temple horoscope to another. The horoscopes from temples contain the blah, 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 blah. This is crazy. Um... Oh, good, the Book of Revelation. I'm glad we're bringing that into this history. As we know, it contains a horoscope <laughs> dated one October <laughs> compiled by the Kabbalist <gasps> Johannes Reuchlin, non sequitur, that's even better. But Reuchlin is um, famous to me just because he advocated the modern Greek pronunciation for speaking ancient Greek as opposed to the Erasmian pronunciation neither of which I use, see this video to learn more about what I think about that. As we have already noted, the inability of latter-day commentators to comprehend the astronomical symbolism of the apocalypse is directly resulting from the loss of knowledge about correct chronology and the distortions introduced by historians in the 16th and 17th century. Uh-huh, sure. But what about the Chinese? Well, let's see how we can annoy them. The Chinese tables of eclipses are useless for dating as they contain too many eclipses that did not take place astronomically. Chinese tables of comets, even if true, cannot be used for dating. There are so many wonderful astronomical facts that, have, that were recorded by Chinese astronomers, among others, and that we've actually been able to pinpoint in the actual cosmos. This is great. Fomenko's methods. Statistical correlation of texts. One of Fomenko's simplest methods is statistical correlation of texts. His basic assumption is that a text which describes a sequence of events will devote more space to more important events. For example, a period of war or an unrest will have much more space devoted to it than a period of peaceful, non-eventful years and that this irregularity will remain visible in other descriptions of the period. For each analyzed text, a function is devised which maps each year mentioned in the text with a number of pages, lines, letters, blah, 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 blah. So if we, with the power of myth, we can determine how crazy we can be. For example, Fomenka compares the contemporary history of Rome written by Titus Livius with a modern history of Rome written by R Russian historian uh, Sergeyev calculating that the two have high correlation, and thus they describe the same period of history, which is undisputed. Oh, good. Indis <laughs> undisputed history. He also compares modern texts which describe different periods and calculates low correlation as expected. When he compares, for example, the ancient history of Rome and the medieval history of Rome, he calculates a high correlation and concludes that ancient history of Rome is a copy of medieval history of Rome, thus clashing with mainstream accounts. Are What does this mean? Well, this is what it means. It means that <laughs> these various rulers you see here, Justinian the second, Constantine the fourth, uh, Justinian the first, it's Anastasia, da, 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 da. and then you have all these uh, ancient figures where we have uh, Josiah, Ma Manasseh, because there's this is, this is Faminka parallelism. Because of their statistical like records, he just thinks these are the same people under different names, interpreted by different social and linguistic filters. <laughs> in statistical correlation of dynasties. In a somewhat similar manner, Faminka compares two dynasties of rulers using statistical methods. First, he creates a database of rulers 
containing relevant information on each of them. Then he creates survey codes for each pair of the rulers, which contain a number which describes the degree of the match of each considered property of two rulers. For example, one of the properties is the way of death. If two rulers were both poisoned, they get value plus one in this grand scheme and, and the property of the way of death. If one ruler was poisoned and another killed in combat, they get a minus one. Ah, less correlation. And if one was poisoned and the other dies of illness, they get a zero. Fomenka claims there is a possibility that chroniclers were not impartial and that different descriptions nonetheless describe the same person. <laughs> this is this is truth. Do you want to know my truth, Claudia? <laughs> <laughs> This is my truth. <laughs> An important property is the length of the rule, especially as they receive higher points. They are considered to be more illustrious ruler of their nation. Fomenka lists a number of pairs of unrelated dynasties, for example, dynasties of kings of Israel and emperors of late Western Rome, Roman Empire, and claims that this method demonstrates correlations between their reigns. So, coincidental things that happened in these histories means that they're actually all the same history, which is why Aeneas founded Rome in the 1300s. <laughs> That's not the first Rome. It was in Egypt, the first Rome. Third Rome is in Moscow. The Moscow, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> graphs which show just the length of the rule of the two dynasties the most widely known. Fomenka's conclusions are also based on other parameters, as described above. He also claims that the regnal history from the 17th to 20th centuries never shows correlation of, of dynastic flows with each other. Therefore, Fomenka insists history was multiplied and outstressed into imaginary antiquity to justify this or other royal pretensions. You are very pretentious, you royals. Not like egalitarian Soviet Union. I'm head of KGB! I have my beats delivered! The Soviet system is actually incredibly unfair. Fomenka examines astronomy and says it's actually all medieval. Of course, he's wrong, but that's entertaining. In his final analysis of an eclipse triad described by the ancient Greek Thucydides in History of the Peloponnesian War, Fomenka dates the eclipses to the 11th century. <laughs> of course. You did not know all history happened in the medieval times. <laughs> Very important to know this truth. <laughs> oh, right, this is, this is the best part. Because of the layered structure of the manuscript, he claims that Thucydides, he claims that Thucydides actually lived in medieval times and in describing the Peloponnesian War between the Spartans and the Athenians, he was actually describing the conflict between the Duchy of Athens and the Duchy of Neopatras in Greece, <laughs> held by the Catalan Company, <laughs> were attacked by the Navarrese Company in the late 14th century. Fomenka claims that the abundance of dated astronomical records and cuneiform texts from Mesopotamia is of little use for dating events as the astronomical phenomena they describe recur cyclically. Oh, cyclically. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a good reason. Now, we might think, surely we have other corroborating scientific methods like, you know, radiocarbon dating or tree ring dating or, you know, logic. Um, well, he rejects those. On, archaeologic, on archaeological dating methods, Fomenka claims, archaeological, dendrochronological, paleographical, and carbon methods of dating of ancient sources and artifacts are both non-exact and contradictory. Therefore, there is not a single piece of firm written evidence or artifact that could be reliably and independently dated earlier than the 11th century. Oh, so because he doesn't think it's valid, it's not. Well, there you go. The mathematician has spoken. Skazal. Dendrochronology is rejected with the claim that for dating objects much older than the oldest still living trees, it is not an absolute, but a date, relative dating method and thus dependent on traditional chronology. So the thing is you can do is you can have these independent timelines and then see how, I don't know, um, perhaps geologically established volcanic eruption or some other similar natural phenomenon that has been recorded in the historical record corresponds to then how the tree rings have 
grown or not grown as much. So it's, and you can find like the ash, you find all kinds of things in trees. It's great. Fomenka also cites a number of cases where carbon dating of a series of objects of known age gave significantly different dates. So there's just some uncertainty or something went wrong in the testing and therefore it's all wrong. You cannot use it. He also alleges undue cooperation. Undo, undo. I love it. This is why you must subscribe to World of Antiquity and enjoy Dr. David Miano's analysis of these pseudo-historical things. Um, because there's this, this idea of they're trying to keep the truth from us kind of thing that's in the um, spirit of these pseudo-historical um, folks. And this kind of undue cooperation is something that he picks apart very well on his channel. So subscribe, subscribe to World of Antiquity. You won't be sorry. He also alleges undue, co undue cooperation between physicists and archaeologists in obtaining the dates since most radiocarbon dating labs only accept samples with an age estimate suggested by historians or archaeologists. Uh huh. Or these are all scientists and all interested in uncovering the truth and that if they uncover factually proven things that are novel and fascinating that they would become famous, so why the heck wouldn't they? Fomenka also claims that carbon dating over the range of, w of the year 1 to year 2000 is inaccurate because it has too many sources of error that are either guessed or completely ignored, and that calibration is done with statistically meaningly number of samples. Well, that's interesting. So your nonsense, sorry, your, sorry, Fomenka. So Fomenka's nonsense statistics about the way that the dynasties of antiquity are all the same, like 12 people apparently, that's more valid than, you know, this radiocarbon stuff. He re also rejects coins, numismatic dating. It is sort of, this has got to be a, a joke, right? Numismatic dating is circular because yeah, they're coins, right? I think, is that, I think that's the joke. I'm just guessing. If it's not, missed opportunity, man. Reception. Universally rejected by mainstream scholars. Pseudoscience, that is correct. But they were popularized by Kasparov. Oh, no. Billington writes that the theory might have quietly blown away in the wind tunnels of academia if not for Kasparov's writing in support of the magazine. <laughs> oh, no. A popular view that art and culture died during the Dark Ages? What? and they're not revived until the Renaissance. For Russian critics, Fomenka represents both an embarrassment and a potent symbol of the depths to which the Russian academy and society have generally sunk amid the diverse societal misfortunes heaped upon Russia since the fall of communism. Western critics see his views as part of a renewed Russian imperial ideology, keeping alive an imperial consciousness and secular messianism in Russia. <laughs> Could be. Oh, this is edited. In 2004, at the Moscow International Book Fair, Anatoly Fomenka with his co-author uh, Gleb Nosovsky were awarded for their books on new chronology the anti-prize called Absatz, literally paragraph, a Russian slang word meaning disaster or fiasco. <laughs> In the category of Pachotnaya Bizgramata. Sorry, I don't, I'm probably not saying that right. The term is a pun on <laughs> Pachotnaya Gramata, Certificate of Honor, and may be translated as Certificate of Dishonor or literally Respectable Illiteracy <laughs> for the worst book published in Russia. Critics have accused Fomenka of alterating. Critics have accused Fomenka of alterating the data to improve the fit with his ideas and have noted that he violates a key rule of statistics by selecting matches from historical record which support his chronology while ignoring those which do not, creating artificial better-than-chance correlations, and that these practices undermine Fomenka's statistical arguments. Okay, so what about harder forms of science? What do they do? How do they corroborate? <laughs> In the specific case of dendrochronology, Fomenka claims that this fails as an absolute dating method because of gaps in the record. Independent dendrochronological sequences beginning with living trees from various parts of North America and Europe extend back 12,400 years into the past. Furthermore, 
The mutual consistency of these independent dendrochronological sequences has been confirmed by comparing their radiocarbon and dendrochronological ages. These and other data have provided a calibration curve for radiocarbon dating, whose internal error does not exceed plus or minus 163 years over the entire 26,000 years of the curve. In fact, archaeologists have developed a fully anchored dendrochronology series going back past 10,000 BC. The absolutely dated tree ring chronology now extends back to 12,410 years before present. For example, on the one hand, Fomenka asserts that the vast majority of ancient sources are either irreparably distorted duplicate accounts of the same events or later forgeries. In his identification of Jesus with Pope Gregory VII, he ignores the otherwise vast dissimilarities between their reported lives and focuses on the similarity of their appointment to religious office by baptism. The theory provides an alternate history account of the true history centered around a world empire called the Russian Horde. The scope of the new chronology has been compared to J.R.R. Tolkien's fantasy world. <laughs> Thousands of pages have been written about it, and authors address a wide range of objections. So, thank you very much again to patron Thomas for suggesting that I um, look into this. This is a very shallow look into it. I haven't really bothered to tear it apart that much because it's pretty darn ridiculous on the face of it. I'll let better experts like Dr. David Miano and his World of Antiquity channel dissect these insanities for all of you to enjoy. But if you enjoyed this and would like to see me do more things like this, please let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for subscribing. And thanks to all of my patrons. Walete. <laughs>